Welcome guys to the weekly outlook. I hope you guys are having um, a good start to your week so far. Um, this is another weekly outlook on Monday. Um, I was a little bit busy yesterday and I also, um, just to be quite frank, I don't really notice a difference between doing a weekly outlook on Sundays versus Mondays. Most of the moves that I trade, I mean, occasionally I'll take a, a trade on Sunday, but most of my trades come between happen, happen between Monday and Thursday. So um, I don't tend to do a whole lot of trading on Sundays or Fridays unless I'm carrying a trade from one week to the next. But um, yeah, so uh, there is a lot going on this week. Okay, so I have a couple different pairs. I don't know why I have this random pair, Swiss franc yen open. I don't have anything to talk about with this pair, but I do have some other pairs that we're going to talk about today. Um, but before we do so, I want to jump into the economic calendar and I just want to just put a couple things on your guys' radar for the week, okay? Um, I'm not gonna talk about every single red folder that's happening this week. Um, there's a, a couple things coming out even tomorrow, but there's two important days this week, okay? Wednesday, if you haven't looked at, if you've taken a look at the economic calendar, you've probably noticed that Wednesday is by far the most important day this week. We have three, yes guys, three interest rate decisions, okay? So the Bank of Canada, the Fed for the Federal Reserve, and the Bank of Japan, okay? All three banks um, have releasing interest rates and releasing policy statements, all sorts of stuff. Now, the most important one, of course, is the Fed, okay? So Wednesday morning, if you're in North America, uh, the Fed is supposed to cut interest rates by 25 basis points. So you'll see right here that the current interest rates is between, it, it, it says right here it's less than 2%. So what that means is right now in the, in the Federal Reserve, it's a floating interest rate. It's between 1.75% and 2%. And they're going to be dropping it 25 basis points. So they're going to be dropping it down to 1.5% to 1.75%. And this is basically uh, guaranteed. I mean, uh, the last time, I'm sure there's an updated percentage. I haven't looked at an updated percentage in a couple of days, but the last time I looked at a, at a percentage, it was an 84% chance. Um, and no, I'm not just making that percentage up. And that's not, a, that's not a percentage I come up with, but that's a percentage that analysts put out there um, that is public information. I mean, you can find it. There's all sorts of articles on all sorts of websites that publish the um, chance, the percent chance. And last time I saw it, it was about 84% chance. So basically, it's almost guaranteed, um, but it, you know, anything can happen, all right? And then Bank of Canada and Bank of Japan that same day. There's also some ADP on Wednesday for the US dollar because Friday, okay, this is the second day, is to segue into the second most important day is non-farm payrolls, okay? Our infamous non-farm payrolls. First Friday of the month, November 1st, we're gonna have non-farm payrolls come out, okay? And then also Wednesday morning, there is some advanced GDP coming out as well, okay? Um, give me a second, guys. Alrighty, sorry about that. Um, so keep in mind, Wednesday, busy day, Friday, busy day, okay, fundamentally, all right? Not a whole lot going on Thursday, not a ton going on tomorrow, just a couple of red folders in between then, okay? Um, so that's the fundamentals. Now, uh, for those of you guys that are here live, by the way, if the, there is the chat room in here, if you guys have a, a pair, something that you want me to look at, go ahead and drop it in the chat. If you want me to look at something, you want my input on something, um, you know, utilize that. If you're watching this recording on YouTube, you can leave a comment if you have some ideas or if you just have a comment that you want to leave. But let's go over the pairs that I'm looking at for this week, okay? So la let's just do a very quick recap, okay? So this is the weekly chart of, um, of the dollar index. And last week, I told you guys that I am taking a bearish 
position and actually not last week, but it's actually been a couple of weeks, but just last week I continue, I should say I continued my bearish bias on the US dollar. Now, not everything, if you actually look at the dollar index, it actually rose a little bit last week. There are some things like if we look at USD CAD that did drop. So in, um, in, correspondence or in correlation with the US dollar weakness that I'm looking for. We'll get to that in just a moment. But just to briefly look at the dollar index, I know that there's a lot going on. I'm actually going to remove this fib. I'm going to remove that green box right there. I'm also going to just remove this for now and just have a cleaned up chart. Okay. So we did find a little bit of support last week, but it's not a lot of support. We retraced about 50% of the prior week, so not last week, but the week before last, it's a weekly candle, but it really didn't find a lot of momentum. So if we look at the daily chart from last week, this is the daily, okay? And these five small candles with the correction is last week, okay? So what I like to see here is the fact, if we're just looking at just raw price action, just raw technical price action, I like that none of these daily candles from last week were very strong, okay? We didn't have like a bullish candle like this, which kept the momentum to push into a few more days, right? We just kind of, it, although it did go up, like technically, yes, you look here and the week ended up here and you look at the week, weekly candle, which is blue, yes, but it's not like a big move up, right? It's not like, a, it's, not like it's like trending, it changed the entire trend. That's what I'm trying to get across, guys is that um, there is still possible downside and I am, I'm still biased to the downside on the dollar, okay? We have the Fed that's gonna be doing some more easing on Wednesday, right? We just looked at them cutting interest rates another 25 basis points. Now there is an argument that the rate cut is already priced in, so the dollar index might not drop um, necessarily right away just because this move is already priced in. I mean, when we do look at the things like I was just talking about with the percentages and it being such a high percentage. I mean, the market's already expecting the cut to happen. You know, the market isn't necessarily going to make it like easy money for everybody. I mean, sometimes it is easy money. Sometimes it's not, but, and hopefully you guys know what I mean when I say that, you know, sometimes you'll see moves and they are like perfect textbook, exactly how it should happen. And other times it's like, what the hell happened? Like it's totally like a messed up, um, you know, manipulated situation. So, but overall, you know, just to, uh, aside from the jibber jabber guys, I am bearish on the dollar still. Okay. Even though last week was slightly bullish, very, very slightly bullish, I'm expecting this support to break and I'm expecting the dollar index to move lower. Okay. That's what I'm expecting. Um, I'm going to wait for it to happen. I mean, keep in mind that there is this range that the dollar index is in. So it is possible that it could go back up to the top of this range. If it does go back up to the top of this range, I'm just going to continue continue to stay on the sidelines. My uh, my confirmation for shorting the dollar index is going to come on the daily, and it's going to be a bearish, a, like a I mean, this is a technically a bearish daily candle, but a largely bearish daily candle, something like this, or something like this, something like this, an exhaustion candle, something like this something that tells us that the sellers are going to be picking up more momentum. Okay. But I'm still bearish on the dollar index and I'd be looking for buys on or sells on the dollar. So that means that I'm looking for buys on Euro USD also. So same thing with Euro USD, you know, last week, technically it was a bearish week, but it didn't, it's not like it was a majorly bearish week, but I think we only lost what we started around 11, 11170. And we ended the week around 110.80. So like a 90 pip range for the week, that's not a very big range. And again, you look at the daily candles, not a, a, not a lot of momentum to the downside. Um, and there is this major level. So this green level, you can see um, it's the weekly, but it looks better on the daily. So this weekly, let me just kind of clean this up a little bit. Okay, hopefully that looks a little bit better. So this green box is marking off the original lows that we had earlier this year. And then we, when we revisited the, these lows and then actually broke the lows right there, broke the lows and then continued lower. And then we acted as resistance here. We also acted as another level of support right here. 
Um, and now we are back above this zone and we're sitting on this prior resistance and what was also former support and now support also once again. So uh, good technical level here. It's basically 111 and I've talked about this a couple of times on the webinars with you guys is 111. So um, your USD is finding support. I look for some buys on your USD this week. Also, let me also just throw something out there is keep in mind, this is going to be a really fundamentally driven week, right? We just looked at everything going on on Wednesday. Um, for the dollar index to keep dropping, really for, for these setups to work out, for the US dollar to continue to weaken, we're going to need the statement that follows, right? So we have a, a statement, okay? We have the interest rate decision, and then we have a press conference. So we're going to need the statement, and we're going to need the press conference Ideally, both of these to be um, dovish for the dollar, right? When, when Powell comes up on the press conference and he's taking questions and he's talking about the 25 basis point that they just did, we want him to be dovish, okay? That's going to help push. I mean, that's essentially going to be the catalyst for the dollar index to hopefully break out of this channel, continue in this, which is a much needed break, right? much needed move for some volatility to pick up for the dollar index to drop to, to 93.2. Okay. And by the way, that is my target. All right. So um, if, and when we do break out of this channel, 93.2 is my target. And guys, like my trading, not to like get into a, a whole point and stuff, but that's basically how my trading is like in a nutshell is I, I keep significant levels on my charts that go back a long time. And when price, you know, like I haven't been interested in 93.2 for look at this since look, this channel started in 2018, right? The last time we were at 93.2 was in 2018, middle of 2018 be that also. So it's almost been a year and a half. Okay, like a little bit over a year that I haven't even been interested in 93.2. But now all of a sudden it's going to become relevant because if we break this channel, boom, that's going to be my target for my shorts. So pretty simple um, when it comes to just like price action on the higher time frames. Uh, also just something to be aware of is gold. So I am also bullish on gold. I just want you guys to um, have this visual. If you don't already know that gold is in this wedge, okay, this is the daily on gold and it's been in this wedge for quite some time, a couple of months. Now we got into this wedge like late, late August, middle of August, and we've been there ever since. Okay. So two months, almost three months, we've been in this, this wedge and it's getting close. It almost, you can see, check it out. It almost broke it at the end of last week. Okay, almost broke at the end of last week, came back down. Um, and now here we are, we're in this wedge, but it is technically a bullish wedge. We should see in as long as the dollar index drops to 93.2, which I think it's gonna do, gold should continue going up to 1600 and eventually 1700 and then higher, okay? Um, Euro USD, bullish on Euro USD. Uh, USD CAD looks like probably one of the better setups for this week. Also, if you guys didn't already make money last week when I called the short, so last week I called a short on, on USD CAD along with the rest of, of everything biased to the downside for the US dollar. Um, it's been picking up some moment, some momentum the past couple of weeks. It started actually three weeks ago uh, at this top. Um, I'll drop it down onto the daily right now. You'll see that this was actually a double top right here. And then we had a nice bearish engulfing weekly on um, or bearish engulfing candle on the weekly. And then we had uh, our, the week before last, and then we had last week. So we've been picking up some bullet or some bearish momentum on this pair. And I, you know, I don't see that stopping, right? Look at the wick from last week. That, that's why I think, I think USD cat is kind of one of those pairs. Um, I, I hate to use the word like easy money, because you know nothing's like easy. I've had a, I've put in a, a shit ton of time and effort to get to the point to where I can call it that. But um, 
when I see a weekly candle like that, I call this week like easy money on USD CAD for like scalping short term downside on USD CAD because it should just keep dropping this week. Okay. And it might not, it might not be a lot. We, it could just be like another, it could just be like a small bearish candle like that. But that's what I mean. You can catch some nice little intraday moves um, as it drops back down. Um, and then I said I would show you the double bar, the double top on the daily, and you have it right there. Okay. So you have this top right here, rejection, this weird thing, like just consolidation at like the 50%, and then did come back up to the top. So one and two. Okay. That's a terrible two. One and two. There's the two tops. All right. And it's still, um, let me also say this too is, you know, there can be some argument that there has been some momentum on the daily slowing down and it is pretty low in relative to like, if you look at like the swing high from the double top. But the thing is, is USD CAD is actually pretty high. See, you take everything away and you just look at where USD CAD is. It's still really, really, really high. Okay. Look at this channel it's been in. Right. It's still really high. It can, it has, I mean, USD CAD is just ready for a free fall, hundreds and hundreds of pips. Remember, remember months ago when I was calling 129, right? And I, and I briefly recapped this um, last week, right? Just to kind of refresh your guys' memory back on August 14th. So I'm, I, I'm not even exaggerating when I say this stuff. Like I'm, I'm, you guys can fact check me when I call stuff or try to like call me out on my bullshit with my setups or whatnot, but it's literally all here. It's, it's right here. I'm transparent. It's right here for you guys. Well, actually this is locked because this was a trade that I took. So I use, just as a side note, I use trading view as my trading journal. Um, you know, I've, I've tried it all like having like an actual notebook and stuff, but you just fill up the notebook and stuff and it's not as, as good. So I just use this and I save a bunch of private setups. So whenever I take a trade, I just publish a private setup. And then um, I also share that with my group and whatnot. But anyways, yeah. So let's just go back, look back to refresh your memory, August 14th. Okay. Um, where is the actual, I don't know where the, uh, where the actual trade setup is here. I think this is glitching out a little bit, but I took a short, I took a short back on August 14th, held it for like two weeks. I'm gonna, gonna refresh this, see if I can get it to load. Let's see. Oh, I think it was just because, there we go. All right, so back on August 14th, my original target, so you can see with my trade, here's the setup. Like I can't change this stuff. Like I can't move this stuff, guys. If you guys know how trading view works, this stuff is locked. There's no way I can go and edit this stuff, all right? So this is just raw, unedited. It's here for you. So this, is the, this is the review. All right, USD CAD, August 14th. I've been expecting, you can see on the trade that I took, I risked 65 pips to make 405 pips. And look at where my target is. Look at where the green number is, 129, okay? And some of you, you guys have probably here, so when, when I say 129, you guys, it's not just like a number I'm just randomly making up this week or last week. I've been expecting USD CAD to get to 129 for months. Um, I ended up, so this trade, long story short, I held it for two weeks. You can actually see, so August 14th, I took the trade, September 4th, closed at break even. Um, actually, I updated on September 4th because I mess, messed up, closed at break even on August 27th. So 13 days after I took the trade, after holding it, um, cause, and you know, I, I don't know you guys, I'm not like an, a perfect trader. Okay. I only have like an idea of what's going to happen, but I don't know every perfect, every situation that's going to happen perfectly. So what, what ended up happening here is price action ended up getting, uh, it just ended up consolidating for like two weeks and then it dropped a little bit. You can see right here where my cursor is. This was like August, like 23rd, 24th it dropped. And I thought that that was going to be because at the time we were just kind of like in this channel, right? You see, this is how crazy, like how crazy complex, like the market can get sometimes you just never know at this, at this time I had predicted that, okay, we were in this channel on USD CAD. I, we were in this long-term downtrend for a couple of years now. Um, I figured maybe we were going to break this channel and this right here was the break lower. So on that break of this out, that time, what that time was a channel, 
Um, I ended up sending my stop loss to break even, got stopped out at break even. But yeah, anyways, long story short, just what I'm trying to say is you can actually just see, and I talked about this last week also, that USD CAD just went sideways for months, right? For two months, USD CAD just went sideways. And now finally, look at that. Just these past couple of days, we finally broke out of this range that we've been in for months. This is the daily chart, guys. These aren't hourly candles or two hour candles. These are each one of these little candles are one day. So this is months right here. Right? This is like two months that we're looking at of data. So it took two months for USD CAD to finally get to this area. And now look where we are. We're getting down to 129. Okay. And we will get there. And that's why when I go and I show USD CAD on the weekly, I'm like, like we're really high on USD CAD. Like we have a, a big drop to make. Okay. So if you made it this far, there's there's a lot of people on that we have the most amount of people on right now. Uh, this is, I think the number one setup to be looking at for the week. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of good trades. Euro USD could be a good trade. Um, uh, or Euro USD could be a good trade for a buy. Gold could be a good trade for a buy, but I think USD CAD for sells intraday sells, even, you know, if you sold literally like something as basic as just selling now and holding it. And if you like, it's, we're probably going to make a red candle. Okay. So it's like, it would be like a bearish candle. So we're probably going to move down, but you don't know what those, what the dips and the waves are going to look like this week. So I would um, be intraday trading and scalping. I definitely would not be taking any like positions or swing trades this week. Just a, just a fair warning. Okay. Because of all the news and everything that's going on, I would be looking for just quick moves, you know, where you're in, you know, bag in 10, 15, 20 pips in and out, you know, do a couple of those this week and you're good. Um, and also AUD USD and NZD USD, I think are both going to continue moving up higher. So I've been calling just as a little bit of a recap, NZD USD and AUD USD. I was bullish on NZD USD since the break of this inverted head and shoulders. AUD USD had a really nice inverted head and shoulders. Also, I don't know why it's not loading. Trading view is just a piece of work sometimes. Let's go back to AUD USD. Or I guess maybe I possibly deleted it. I guess so. I guess I deleted it. But there is this inverted head and shoulders back in here. Was it this one? Somewhere in here. I don't know. Now I'm now I'm tripping out. Let me let me look at it on NZD USD. Yeah, okay. It was the four hour NCD USD boom. Um, I don't know. I don't see the, I mean, I see the, where it would be like right here. I don't know, but I had a head and it, AUD USD had a head and shoulders. It broke it somewhere in here. Maybe it was right here. I don't know. I'm confusing myself. I, cause I haven't been trading. I mean, I actually have been trading AUD USD. Let me just look at my trade. You know what? Let me go here. Here we go. Uh, no, this is the trade that I took. I don't know. I guess I did. I sorry, guys. Don't mean to to leave everybody hanging there. For some reason, I thought that there was an, an inverted head and shoulders on both of these, and I thought I had. It drawn, but you know what? Now that I'm actually realizing it, it was Euro USD in the dollar index. Euro USD down here in the dollar index up here. But I deleted the inverted head and shoulders on the dollar index. Okay, I'm probably just confusing you guys right now. I'm confusing myself. Let me just keep moving on, okay? Uh, all I was trying to say is AUD USD and NZD USD are both bullish, okay? I would be looking for buys. So just to, to be clear, this week, the best trades, USD CAD sell, okay? AUD USD and NZD USD buys. Okay, both those two pairs buys, USD CAD sells. Okay, they correlate negatively to each other also. Okay, so those three pairs, these three pairs, make some money this week on. Okay. 
AUD USD made the correction after a nice big spike. I made a ton of money on this spike. Me and all my students, I mean, you probably, you guys probably just saw that right on the four hour. We took this trade. This has been our best trade this month. All right. Uh, we risked 49 pips. Uh, we, it didn't quite hit our take profit. We ended up closing it early, but yeah, really nice trade. It's our trade of the month and I've been waiting. So AUD USD actually had this channel that it's breaking out of right now as we speak. I'm telling you guys right now, AUD USD is going to climb this week. Okay. So capitalize on buying AUD USD and selling USD CAD. Um, okay, let me let me check the chat. Ashley, I got a beautiful entry on USD CAD. Very nice. Can I see anything on? Can I see anything on dollar yen? Um, I know your bias would be downside. Yeah, I mean, most likely it would be downside. But you know, I said this last week that I'm bearish on the dollar overall but the thing that i don't like and this is also last week because dollar yen really hasn't moved is that it's got this bull flag you can see it there on the daily you can see it really nice on the four hour here too right so it's spiked up and then it's been sitting here for the past two weeks it's been sitting here on this this at the at these highs so not a huge fan of that because it does, dollar yen kind of looks bullish but I mean, I would be all for the downside because a weak US dollar and then also strengthening commodities, strengthening uh, safe havens, sorry, not commodities, safe havens, like gold and the, uh, the Swiss franc and the yen, I would expect dollar yen to go down. So it's probably just making some sort of um, like new high up here and then it'll, it'll drop, something like that. Um, in Tresmond, you're asking about EuroCAD. Well, overall, I'm since I'm bearish on USD CAD, I'm going to be overall bearish on EuroCAD also because it's that's basically buying into CAD strength. Um, something to just take note of also is the bearish engulfing weekly right there. I'm also curious what the swap rate is on on EuroCAD because I'll I'll, say, I'll tell you one in a second. EuroCAD. Oh well, wow. Okay, it does pay a positive rollover to the downside. Only reason I mention is because actually couple of weeks ago and this is many many weeks ago this was back in wow, August that feels like it was just a couple weeks ago not that long ago but there is this blue weekly candle that had come into this rain not range but had rebroken this major support level you can see right there and it made this big exhaustion candle and I was considering taking a short on Euro EuroCAD I mean really hasn't moved a whole lot from where I would have shorted at. I mean, actually that is quite a bit with this pair. That's like 300 and 310 pips about it's moved. Um, plus all those weeks, every single day in those weeks, you would be um, getting charged up. up positive swap also so just, I'm, I'm kind of just talking to myself. Uh, I mean, I, sorry guys, but I was just looking at, EuroCAD, just something I noticed, but good to know. All right, guys. So again, I cannot stress enough that I think USD CAD looks the best for a sell. AUD USD looks the best for a buy, you know, and I also cannot reiterate enough guys that I am not perfect. Okay. Please do not run to your MetaTrader 4s and over leverage a position, right? Is it okay to take a trade based off of something I say here? Sure. If it matches your strategy and you agree with it and it looks good and it makes sense to you and you're using good risk management and all of the above, all those check, all those check boxes are checked, then go for it. Okay. But guys, just keep in mind that, um, and I, I, I say this all the time that you don't need to be 
a perfect or the amazing, great, spot on 90%, 99% accurate trader. And realistically, guys, if you're somebody that's out there that maybe is new to Forex, start just learning about Forex, or maybe you have it just somewhere in your head that you think that there's somebody out there that's going to give you, you know, signals that win 100% of the time or that someone that you can just even follow that's going to teach you a strategy where you can win 100% of the time or even win like 90% of the time or 80% of the time. I'm telling you guys, there it's, it's, I mean, sure, maybe there, there's some people out there that win those percentages, but majority of people that do well, if you want to be in like the, the if you want to know like the average of people that do well trading, you're winning 50 to 60% of the time. And the people that do well in have that win rate understand that it's not about um it's not about like over leveraging your accounts it's about using good risk management and then when you have the right setups you tr you trade properly you compound your trades when you can and you make your money i mean it's as simple as that okay but i'm gonna leave you guys there okay so just keep in mind guys you know don't blame me if usd cad goes up this week and AUD USD goes down and it doesn't go in our direction. Okay. Also, you know, please don't you know, be all excited. Just don't over leverage. Okay. Just don't over leverage. Cause the, the worst thing that I could have you do is to not actually lose money, but would be actually to over leverage a position based on one of my weekly outlooks from what I say, and then you make a bunch of money on it. And then now all of a sudden you think that all of my trades are going to be really good. So then you put like more money in and then you lose even more. So that's just what I hate to see. I just don't like to see people lose money because of me guys. That's, that's it doesn't feel good. And, but you know, at the end of the day, I've learned to, if people don't manage their risks properly, I don't really care. I can't, can't help that. I'm, so, I'm here to give out free value and help you guys, but you know, there's, got to be able to use this knowledge wisely okay and make sure you agree with it right don't just don't just sit here like a like a dumb person just like uh, just watching it and not even thinking for themselves right like guys if you want to get good at trading you want to get better at trading it's about progressing right it's about using your own brain okay that's awesome if you guys are on here but please I hope you aren't just using my ideas and hoping on, you know, relying on me every single Sunday. I want you guys to use my ideas, my stuff combined with your setups and then you, you make your own profits. All right. Uh, but that's it guys. That's it for, for Monday. Okay. So that's going to conclude things. I hope you guys all have a great week. Um, students, I'll see you guys tomorrow on the Tuesday webinar. Everybody else. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys in Telegram. So take care, everybody.